Hello grade 12s and welcome to this video on cell notation. Cell notation can be a bit confusing but I'm sure you guys will get the hang of it. I will literally be going through only cell notation in this video and I will incorporate a few examples to reinforce the concept. So basically what cell notation is is a shortened version of telling your friend what type of chemicals you are using to build your galvanic cell. In your cell notation, you will find that the electrodes tend to be written on the extreme left and right hand sides of the cell notation. We say by convention, the anode is always on the left and the cathode is on the right. <coughs> Excuse me. So, anode, just a reminder, anode is where oxidation takes place. Your cathode, red cat, is where reduction takes place. Okay, so for active electrodes, active electrodes means that the electrodes literally take part in the reaction. So like in the case of your zinc copper galvanic cell, we found that the zinc electrode became less and less, it lost mass because the zinc solids became zinc ions in solution. That is an active electrode because it is taking part in the reaction. Your copper electrode gained mass, we had more and more copper solid forming because the copper ions left the solution and became copper solids. That is also an active electrode. So when you have an active electrode, this is how your standard, or your standard, sorry, your shortened cell notation is going to look. All right. On the left-hand side, we're going to have the reducing agent. Now, just to put things into context, let's use the copper, the zinc copper cell. Let's write out the reaction and let's make sure that you understand what's going on. So this reaction looks like this. We have Zn solid, it goes and it forms Zn2 plus, plus two electrons. This is the oxidation half reaction. Then we have the reduction half reaction, which is our copper ions. They gain electrons and they are then going to form copper solid. The net equation is going to look like this, ZnS plus Cu2 plus is going to form Zn2 plus plus Cu solid. Okay, and these are obviously aqueous. All right, so that, that is how it looks. So they say on the far left, you're going to have your reducing agent. You guys literally just need to memorize this. Your reducing agent, in this case, remember reducing agent is the substance that is being oxidized. In this case, our zinc solid is the reducing agent. It is what will be oxidized. So we write down zinc solid first. It is our reducing agent because it is oxidized. Then we write out the oxidized species. Now what this means is after your reducing agent has been oxidized, what are you left with? Look, after my zinc solid has been oxidized, we are left with zinc ions. So we write out the zinc ions. Notice that these two are separated by a straight line. Then we show that this is a galvanic cell by drawing the salt bridge using two lines as drawn over there. Next, we have the oxidizing agent. The oxidizing agent is this substance, copper, two plus ions. We write that down. We also indicate the phases, please. And on the right hand side, we now have the reduced species. So just a reminder, your oxidizing agent is the substance that is going to be reduced. So our oxidizing agent here is the copper ions because they are going to gain electrons. After that, we have our reduced species, the substance that forms after the copper ions have been reduced, and that is the copper solid, and we draw it over there. Okay. 
what you guys should more or less see is that we actually, I don't want to say this really because it might cause big problems, very, very big problems if you do it wrong or if it doesn't follow this rule. But if I write down my oxidation half reaction, sorry, and then my reduction half reaction, we basically have it following in this order. So let's just get rid of all of my circles and lines. Okay. Reducing agent. We write down the reducing agent. Then we write down the oxidized species. We draw in our um, salt bridge. Then we have our oxidizing agent. Then we have our reduced species. You guys see how that follows? It's like literally first this, then that, then that, then that. that that's literally it. Okay, that, that's how we sort of write this down. Of course, you need to know what I'm referring to when I say reducing agent, oxidizing agent, oxidized species, reduced species. Know that your reducing agent is the anode and your reduced species is the cathode. Your anode is negatively charged in a galvanic cell. And your cathode is positively charged in a galvanic cell. Know those things. But guys, this is literally the cell notation. That, that is it. Okay. Now, sometimes you're going to find that you don't have a cell with active electrodes. We say it has inactive electrodes. Normally, your inactive electrodes are substances like platinum or carbon and forming gas products. Okay, actually not forming gas products, but basically your, the reason why you would use inactive electrodes is because, well, oh no, they're right, forming gas products, they, they're not wrong. Okay, so this is how you would write it. If you have inactive electrodes, you need to write them on the sides and then go and write reducing agent oxidized uh, species, oxidizing agent reduced species. So here we have a... Huh, a chlorine, a fluorine galvanic cell. All right, so the way this would happen is we would have Cl aqueous is, let me just make sure. Yes, so the reaction here is Cl aqueous is going to be oxidized because it's going to lose that electron and it's going to form two electrons like so okay this is the oxidation half reaction and then for the fluorine gas we start off with f2 gas so this is a gas as well um, this is going to gain the two electrons and it's going to form the fluorine ions in solution Okay, we can write out the net reaction, but it's not necessary. So just to make sense of this, what basically happens is because this is a gas and that's a gas, we use, remember you can't have a gas per se as an electrode, so we use platinum electrodes like this. Can you see over here, we have gas bubbles. We pump in the chlorine gas or the fluorine gas. We have the platinum. What basically happens is the bubbles bubble around the platinum. Okay, in this case, it happens in the opposite direction, but they bubble around the platinum, and then they're able to interact with the ions in solution. So that electrode electrode basically allows the bubbles to stick on over there. That that's basically what's happening. Okay, so over here. We write out platinum because that is one of the inactive electrodes. Then we have the reducing agent. We have the oxidized species. Reducing agent, oxidized species. Then we have the oxidizing agent and then the reduced species. Oxidizing agent, reduced species. And then we have the other inactive electrode. Okay, so that, that's basically it. I'd like to show you guys just one more example, just to make sense of it. If you, But what you guys should understand is if you write your oxidation half reaction at the top, reduction half reaction at the bottom, you should be able to remember the order of writing this down without actually remembering the order. So here is a fancy cell because it's made up of a solid active electrode. And on the other hand, we have an inactive electrode. So what is happening here, they haven't included it, but we have Cl minus ions in solution. 
So I've included this table of standard reaction, standard reduction potentials, just so that we can get our half reactions. We have taking place here a reaction involving aluminium and chlorine. So let's find aluminium. It's aluminium 3 plus. And then we have chlorine. We need to find chlorine. Oops, I can't find it. Oh, yeah, it is. And then we have chlorine over there. So these are quite a distance apart. Okay, so what is happening over here? Remember, this is a galvanic cell. So if you are feeling confused, remember in a galvanic cell, we have a spontaneous reaction. So this must be a product and this must be a product so that I can have, well, that gradient. Okay, so that happens that way and this happens that way. So as a result, when we write down our reduction half reaction, our reduction half reaction is chlorine gas is going to go and form chlorine. No, 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 no. Is going to gain chlorine ions in order to... No, sorry. Let me say that again. I'm sorry, guys. Chlorine gas is going to gain um, electrons to form chlorine ions and then our oxidation half reaction is here at the bottom and here we have aluminium solid is going to form Al3 plus plus 3 electrons just to show you guys if we want to balance this here we have 3 there we have 2 so we times 2 times 3 that gives us Two, two, six, three, six, three, so that the I the net um reaction is two Al solid plus three Cl two is going to form two Al plus three Cl minus. Okay, so just for clarity, that's how that would be. But anyway, coming back to those. Um, cell notations huh. what we have to do is we start off with the oxidation half reaction here we have a active electrode so it's going to be a l solid right is going to form a l 3 plus aqueous this is separated by a salt bridge from the reduction half reaction where we have chlorine gas which is going to form Cl minus ions and since in this on this side we have an inactive electrode we write down Pt and guys that is your cell notation so literally that once you have your oxidation and reduction reactions written down in order you just follow aluminium aluminium ions chlorine chlorine ions but since we have an inactive electrode we include the platinum and guys that is the end of this video on cell notation any questions you let me know